Assalamu alaikum and hi everyone. This is Dr. Maz Qureshi and I'm here to help you pass your exams, especially at your FCPS, USMLE and MRCS, MRCP exams. It's often difficult if you don't know how to decode a scenario. First, you need to know the anatomy, then the physio and the pathology related to it. So let's dive into it. We have this scenario of a 45 year old male who is unable to tolerate everyday sound. Entry to which of the following cranial nerves might be responsible? So first we have hypoglossal. Hypoglossal is the 12th nerve which is responsible for the movement of tongue and other things as well. Then we have the facial which is responsible for controlling the facial muscles. The accessory which is basically giving the shrugging and the vagal which is responsible for GIT and then the glossopharyngeal, the ninth nerve. So when the sound comes into our mind, we should not miss these small hints in the scenario. We should know everything about sound. How is it produced or what helps us to hear the sound? And if you know this answer, please hit pause and comment below your answer. And then let's see if you are right. And if you don't, stay till then to find out the real answer. So this is your normal anatomy of your ear. And let's make it a bit interesting and make sounds coming from every direction. So now your ear is a work of art. And it has external ear, the middle ear and the internal ear. So sound comes through your pinna, hits your tympanic membrane, this one, yes, the green, and then the brown ones, which are the ossicular chain. This is the malleus, the incus, and the stapes, yes, the famous three. Stapes being the smallest of all bones. And then you have this inner ear having two apparatus the cochlear apparatus or the vestibular apparatus. The vestibular being responsible for the balance and cochlea responsible for the hearing system. Now, you can remember these three bones through a mnemonic, which is M, I, S, MIS, malleus, incus, and stapes. Now, stapes has different parts. Which, has, which is really important for this scenario. So now let us zoom in a bit and let us look on different parts of the ossicular chain, which are the three best bones, the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. Malleus having the anterior and posterior malleolar fold, which you can see normally on otoscopic and endoscopic examination. Then going deeper from the attachment of body of the malleus to the incus. And then this one here, the neck and the foot plate attaching to the old window is really really important and step is being also the shortest bone in your whole body has uh, attachment on the old window and it depends upon how uh, great the frequency of a sound is basically so here as you can see uh, there is a um, foot plate here and then you have this neck here and it is attached to the incus this is the malleus the body the uh, short and long process now the most important two muscles in your body which are responsible uh, for uh, adjusting uh, how much this stapes uh, should uh, connect and uh, with the oval window is our two actually and they are uh, roughly uh, the stapedius muscle and the tensor tamponi muscle. The, uh, the stapedius basically uh, what it does is it the stapedius here allows wide 
oscillation of stapes on the oval window. Now, the uh, tensor tempeni here is really interesting because it, it basically attaches to your incus and uh, the, uh, it arises from your cartilaginous part of the tubo tympanic tube, yeah, the pharyngotympanic tube or you can say the uh, eustachian tube here as you can see. And uh, both of these muscles uh, have different nerve supply. So this one, this is basically your facial nerve. Uh, this is your seventh nerve, the facial nerve, and this is the nerve to the stapedius giving off branch to the uh, stapedius muscle. Are responsible for all the action behind uh, the attenuation reflex and when this reflex uh, is paralyzed stapedius muscle gets really sensitive it can be due to paralysis because of bell's palsy or any facial uh, nerve injury in short stapedius muscle won't be able to control stapes hence more sensitivity to sound and this is known as hyperacusis this is another diagram where you can see the stapes and then the stapedius muscle, the foot plate, and then this is the pharyngotympanic tube, which I was talking about for the station tube and the tensor tympani. And uh, the function of the tensor tympani is really interesting. And it, if you take this as a tympanic membrane, it would really pull the tympanic membrane towards uh, the medial side or the inner ear side and increases the tension in it. Hence, uh, it is really important in that case. However, the nerve supply is uh, different from that of the uh, stapedius muscle. This nerve supply is basically from your the fifth nerve, trigeminal nerve, and is divided into three parts. And so, the mandibular is are responsible for all the action behind the movement of the tensor tympani muscle. Now, this is another diagram here. As you can see, uh, you have the stapedius muscle, the tensor tympani muscle, and how it attaches towards the incus. Yeah, uh, this is a very cartoonic, a really good cartoon of how a normal person is. And then you have this Bell's palsy patient here. Or the facial you can see the drooping of the eyelids and lower um, face as well and you can see a lot of those symptoms like uh, as i said drooping of the eyelid or facial weakness or the loss of uh, taste especially when the facial as the facial nerve is responsible for the, uh, i mean the anterior two-third of the tongue this hair so you will uh, lose a taste here you will have drooling eyelids and uh, drooling uh, lips as well pain in the behind the ear or tenderness of uh, different parts of your face then you may be asked in examination to differ uh, and i have also made a video on this facial versus uh, supranuclear lesion or the stroke and the main difference is that uh, the, uh, in stroke or supranuclear lesion, uh, you have lower half involved while in your um, facial palsy here, uh, the whole of the half face is involved. So that is one of the main differences. Thank you guys so much for watching and all the support you have been giving me but and this is a big part if you have question like this do let me know in the comment section below because i'm gonna take the first comment and i'm gonna make a video on that topic and if you haven't subscribed already and you like it don't forget to click thumbs up hit subscribe and click that red bell icon so that you don't miss any of my future videos and for all those facebook users out there we have a page msq productions which is full of these kind of videos in different languages making difficult topics easy and concise for you guys and don't forget to check out the video between facial versus stroke also let me know which part of the video you like the most one more thing if you have questions like this you can also become part of our telegram group by texting on 92 Double three two double five four double two eight one on our whatsapp where we make new mnemonics and new ways to solve mcqs and it is just free so why wouldn't you do it get it Got it? Good.